I'm Robert Mays, and I'm the board chair of the Chamber of Commerce of Huntsville, Madison County this year, and otherwise the CEO of Blue Creek Investment Partners. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for making today's luncheon another sold-out chamber event. Mayor Battle, I don't think it gets any better than this. I mean, here we have as a record crowd to hear all of the good news of, of where uh, we've been and uh, the good news of where we're going to be going. So we look forward to hearing your remarks a little bit later in the program. Now it's my pleasure to recognize the head table, so please hold your applause until I've introduced everyone. Seated to uh, my far left is uh, uh, Madison Mayor Troy Trulock. Seated to the Mayor uh, Trulock's right is Dale Strong, Chairman of the Madison County Commission. And seated to his right is Mark Curran, the Chamber's Vice Chair of Government Affairs. Seated on my immediate right is our honored guest, Mayor Battle, who will be further introduced later. And to the Mayor's right is another special guest, Eula Battle, the Mayor's wife, clearly the better half. And at my uh, far right is Tom Cashin, the Administrative Affairs Manager of Toyota Motor Manufacturing of North Alabama, the sponsor of our event today. And we, greatly, we greatly appreciate all that Toyota does for our community. And at this time, Tom, I'd like to invite you to the podium. We have a, uh, a plaque that we would like to offer you as an appreciation for your support of this chamber event. I'd also like to recognize our gold sponsors, Adtran Incorporated, Aerojet Rocketdyne, Beeson Nally, Colsa Corporation, Curse, Port of Huntsville, PPG Aerospace, Regions Bank, Remington Outdoor Company, The Boeing Company, SAIC, and our silver sponsors, Davidson Technologies, Digium Incorporated, Public Financial Management, and Qualitest Pharmaceuticals. Additional sponsors of today's event are listed in today's program and on the screens, and uh, we are very grateful for all of the sponsors of this luncheon. Would you join me again in a round of applause for thanking each one of them? Also joining us today are a number of elected officials, so please hold your applause until I've recognized everyone. With the Alabama Legislature, we have Senator Steve Livingston. Welcome, Steve. And State Representatives Mac McCutcheon, Mike Ball, Phil Williams, Howard Sandiford, Laura Hall, Jim Patterson, and Richie Wharton. With the Madison County Commission, we have Commissioners Steve Harway, Bob Harrison, Roger Jones, Phil Riddick, and Eddie Sisk, and Phil Vandiver. And with the Huntsville City Council, we have Councilman President uh, Mark Russell and Council Members Richard Showers Sr., Bill Kling, Will Culver, and Councilwoman Jeannie Robinson. Jeannie, welcome to the City Council. And with the Huntsville City School Board, we have School Board Members Walker McGinnis, Laura McCauley, Beth Wilder, Elisa uh, Farrell, and Mike Colbreth. Welcome to all the new school board members. And with the Madison City Council, we have council members Tim Holcomb and DJ Klein. From the 23rd Judicial Circuit, we are pleased to have judges Dick Richardson and Linda Coates. And with the Madison County, we have Linda Hall, the county tax collector, and Fran Hamilton, the county tax assessor. With Senator Shelby's office, we have Carrie Suggs, and with Senator Sessions' office, we have Lisa Montgomery. From Alabama's 5th Congressional District, we are very pleased to have Tiffany Knoll representing Congressman Mo Brooks. And from the Jackson County Commission, we have Chairman Matthew Hodges and Commissioner Stacy Ludwell, Tim Guffey, and Jason Venable. 
And from the city of Scottsboro, we have Mayor Melton Potter. And lastly, from the city of Florence, we're pleased to have Mayor Hickey Haddock. Please help me welcome all of our elected guests. We also have several dignitaries from Redstone Arsenal joining us, so again, please hold your applause until I've welcomed everyone. Lieutenant General David Mann, Commanding General of the Army Space and Missile Defense Command. Marshall Space Flight Center Director Patrick Sherman. Garrison Commander Colonel Bill Marks. Army Material Command, Command Sergeant Major James Sims and Redstone Command Sergeant Major Bob Layton, and representing the Army Expeditionary Contract Command, we have Command Sergeant Major Angel Clark. Our prosperity as a community is in due large part to the elected and government officials that we have all working together in large and small ways, frankly, including your attendance here today to this luncheon. We're delighted that you can be with us and we thank you for your leadership and your, servants, your, uh, your service to this community. <laughs> now at this time, if you would, bow your heads and I'll uh, offer the invocation. Father, we come to you today with grateful hearts, grateful for all the things that you do for us, most of which is really unseen. Sometimes we take for granted all the blessings that you, uh, you indeed give us. Be with us all, be with everyone in this room, all the companies that are represented, that you give them wisdom as they care for their employees. Father, I pray for all the families that are represented, all the husbands, the wives, the children, the grandchildren. Pray, Father, for all of our men and women in uniform and their service to our country. Uh, I pray you keep them out of harm's way, be with their families as well. Father, we thank you so much for the leadership of our community, uh, for Mayor Tommy Battle, for uh, his servant leadership that he has given so uh, eloquently over the years. Pray that you continue to keep your hand on him, give him favor in uh, your eyes, and uh, bless the work of his hands. All these things we pray in your son's name. Amen. I know that many of you have not finished uh, your meal, and certainly some are just getting it, so uh, please feel free to continue eating. And that's uh, on the advice of the mayor who said, go ahead and keep on eating, it'll be fine. But while you're doing that, uh, let me tell you, it's my honor to introduce our speaker today. A little more than two years ago, Mayor Tommy Battle was reelected to his second term in a landslide vote, collecting over 80% of the vote. By doing so, he's continued a long trend of stable and local government. Tommy is only the seventh Huntsville mayor in the last 88 years. That's since 1926. Now, stability in local government matters. Just ask Moody's or Standard & Poor's when you're getting your bond rating. The printed biography that you have, it's in the program, includes a lot of the details regarding the mayor's birthplace and early development efforts. <clears throat> but what I'd like to focus on now is his leadership in our economic development he has led initiatives to help this region capitalize on its capabilities in the geo, space, cyber, and energy worlds that will pay tremendous dividends in the years to come. He has invested tremendous time meeting with existing business to explore ways to help them be more successful and grow their business here. And he's met with many businesses that are considering open an office here. On Redstone Arsenal, we have seen the most prolific period of growth in the Arsenal's history. The Arsenal and the city are partners in the development of a new business park that will sustain this region's growth for many years to come. 
The city of Huntsville has been awarded triple A bond ratings each of the years that he has been in office. That's a claim that a very, very small fraction of cities in this country can boast. And yet, even with all of these accomplishments, he's remained humble to his core, a servant leader who would rather give than receive the credit. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Huntsville's Mayor, Tommy Battle. Mark, thank you for those kind remarks. It's much better than go ahead and eat. The mayor's going to talk a little while, and he'll have you out by one. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know, this is, this is a great time to be in the city of Huntsville. And I want to thank everybody here for being with us to, here today. You know, every year I get to come up here and I get to talk about what a great city we have. You know, and today is no exception. The progress we've made, the ability of this community to come together and support each other in times of need and opportunity, the energy and attention Huntsville is receiving as a desirable, vibrant, and livable city. It's no accident. Our success is the result of hard work by each and every one of you here today. To the businesses you run, the support you offer each other, the many ways you reinvest in Huntsville, in your employees, your philanthropic efforts, your place of worship, you are the reason that we are a success here. You inspire me, and I'm very humbled and very honored to serve as your mayor. To my wife and best friend Eula, 26 years in December, Many of my friends over there would say that you uh, are long-suffering. <laughs> I'd say you're wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> to my esteemed colleagues on the city council, we have some here and some over here. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your service, your dedication. Thank you for being able to make some hard decisions. You're the reason we get the AAA ratings. Council President Mark Russell, Council Members Bill Kling, Richard Showers, Will Culver, and our newest member, Jenny Robinson, we are a team. And your guidance and partnership are help, what has helped make Huntsville a success. Thank you to each of you. To our city's department heads, and many of them are out here in the, in the audience. Raise your hand if you're a department head out here. There we go. Got them at a couple of tables around here. My deepest gratitude to you for your hard work and accomplishments. I told them this this morning. These are the men and women who are the boots on the ground. They do the heavy lifting. And I can promise you they are watching and squeezing every single tax dollar as they push forward and challenge their departments to innovate. Thank you for all that you do. And to our partners, we have many partners in the city of Huntsville. Partners like the Huntsville Madison County Chamber of Commerce, Chip, thank you, and the board. To my partners like my colleagues who are sitting here, Dale Strong, Chairman of the County Commission, Troy Trulock, Mayor of Madison, and soon to be defeated in tennis on Saturday. <laughs> To our partners with Redstone Arsenal, NASA, to our partners throughout this community, the North Alabama leadership, service organizations, and nonprofits, thank you for helping make us a success. Every one of you are part of the team that makes us a success. To the positive attitude and the hard work by the citizens of this community, it supersedes any challenge that seeks to divide us. We will not dwell on the negative. This is a city filled with light, with promise, a city of opportunity, with citizens who want to get work together for jobs, better neighborhoods, clean parks, and good schools. That is our focus. To say we're in an enviable position to most is an understatement. Governor Bentley recently said he spends more time recruiting here in North Alabama than anywhere else. And you are the reason why. 
you are the reason that he continues to come back and that companies continue to want to be located here. Our plan is working. Together, we have created a dynamic community that is widely recognized as a place that does it right. These successes have been the result of vision, planning, and hard work. All the belt tightening and creative strategies we have employed throughout the recession have paid off, and we're realizing the benefits of making smart and often tough decisions. Six years ago, we set out on a course to bring greater economic prosperity to the community. We had a strategy, a plan with goals. That strategy and plan included strengthen our educational system, heighten our visibility, improve our infrastructure, enhance our livability, attract more young professionals, and retool our planning process. Those are the secrets to success. Education, visibility, infrastructure, livability, young professionals, and planning for success. We planned for success and we took action. Our mission has been straightforward, to provide a lean and accountable government that delivers quality services, job opportunities, and strong infrastructure and quality of life amenities. As a result, this past year has been extraordinary for Huntsville. It's been a year of exciting announcements, groundbreakings, and ribbon cuttings. Let's look. called Quantum Workplace found that more than 77% of employees in Huntsville are going above and beyond at work because they like where they are and they want to stay here. The site of Huntsville's first airport is being transformed into a public park, John Hunt Park, which is the site of the inaugural tree planting festival this Saturday. It really makes you proud to be part of Huntsville because everybody gets in, everybody gives back. That's what makes Huntsville such a special place. The future of the riverfront is all part of a big picture plan. And the city of Huntsville is ready to take the next step into the landing, but they need your help. City planners heard what residents had to say during a Citizens Academy focused on expanding the city's greenways. And we think this is just the start of major changes to this area of town. The majority of employees are happy in Huntsville. That's according to a new survey by Forbes magazine. It's that kind of climate that keeps industries growing here in the Rocket City. To our friends from Verizon, we want to say thank you for being great partners in the city of Huntsville. Governor Robert Bentley was joined by Mayor Tommy Battle and other elected leaders from around North Alabama to welcome the nation's oldest gun manufacturer to the area. Today, Boeing revealed they will establish a multi-million dollar research center in Huntsville. This could bring a lot of jobs here. Remington. That's to a good crew up there who did a great job. You know, it has been an incredible year. From the moment that Remington announced its decision to bring 2,000 jobs here, the state's largest announcement for 2014, to the many expansions we've seen in local businesses, we're proud of Huntsville's progress. SES, a jewel in Alabama's aviation crown, announced a major expansion for its helicopter operations, while Verizon added hundreds of new jobs to its customer care center. Davidson Technology opened up a second building in Research Park. H Hudson Alpha has grown from a dozen companies to 27 and now houses some of the brightest talent on the planet. G 
GE Intelligent Platforms opened a new facility on South Parkway for research, design, systems integration, and manufacturing, all under one roof. Northrop Grumman opened a Center for Integration and Engineering, and through all of the new announcements and expansions, we celebrated companies like PPG, who marked 45 years in business here as a leader in aerospace transparencies. On the retail side, we identified retail new businesses to the market, and we worked hard to land them in Huntsville. We wanted our citizens to have the shopping amenities found in major markets, and we want their sales dollars to remain here so they can be reinvested in our roads and schools. We welcome Whole Foods, Cabela's, and neighborhood markets, Orvis, At Home, and a host of new restaurants and boutiques. Huntsville is a regional retail center. Our economic plan also honed in on urban development, downtown, maximizing our footprint and reinvesting in projects that provided the highest return on our taxpayers' dollars. The newly opened Twickenham Square, the recently announced Big Spring Square, and coming soon, the Avenue at Jefferson and Holmes. These are the types of urban lifestyle projects that attract young professionals, another one of our goals. These public-private partnerships are generating hundreds of new jobs. They're also bringing energy and excitement to the urban core through a mix of housing, retail, entertainment, and lodging. Small footprint, big payoff, smart stuff. Revitalization has also extended to the retired school buildings across our city. We're proud that many of these facilities are now being repurposed. East Clinton Elementary is now a private school with a public park. Johnson High and Grissom's campuses will be redeveloped into great public facilities. West Huntsville Elementary is turning hip. It's turning into, as they said it, an entrepreneur's flop house for innovators and makers. And Stone Middle School will become home to at least two craft breweries with additional entertainment and dining options and a concert lawn for music and public activities. These are outstanding projects that revitalize neighborhoods and enhance our quality of life. Our economic development strategy is working. Since 2009, we've seen $1.2 billion in new capital investment in Huntsville. Our population has grown 4.7%. We've announced 13,000 new jobs and hundreds of new businesses to the Huntsville economy. This has made us grow among the fastest of any in the nation. Even more impressive, three-fourths of our new jobs were generated by existing businesses. Unemployment is down to 5.7% from a recessionary high of 7.3%. At present, our team is actively working on, let's see, Chip, we started off last Monday was 35, on Tuesday we were at 32, on Wednesday we were at 38, Thursday we were 39, and we're, are we 40 projects right now? We're working on 39 projects right now. You know, and these projects range from a few dozen jobs to several thousand. We were just talking to one this morning, and it appears, oh, we're on everybody's top five lists. Some days we're scrambling to entertain two and even three site selection teams coming to see the Rocket City. It's a good problem to have. The companies we recruit are small and medium and large, and they span a wide range of industries. Diversification is a key to everything that we do. We're fortunate to be able to also to be selective, and we can be selective in the community, in the companies that we try to attract here. We have prime land, infrastructure, and skilled workforce, not to mention a quality of life that is second to none, and a great cost of living. We're also listening to local businesses too. Remember I said three-fourths of our new jobs came from existing businesses. We want to be certain that the city is contributing to and not inhibiting local companies from growing and prospering. A growing economy brings new jobs and we want to connect the companies with available jobs to the people who need them. In some ways we're saying we want to keep some of those jobs local. We're doing this through an ongoing series of career readiness seminars with our education and business partners. One example is Calhoun Community College. Where's Dr. Beck? She's here where Dr. Beck is here today. Calhoun Community College is working with a program with Toyota and offers student practical experience while attending school. Drake State 
is also working with the new Mechatronics program, helping support hundreds of new jobs emerging from the growing helicopter operations at SES. UAH is collaborating with Huntsville City Schools to support programs in science, space science, cybersecurity, atmospheric sciences, engineering, and more. Alabama A&M announced a new logistics program that is vital to the Army's global role in controlling materiel. City schools are teaching advanced manufacturing through the Green Power Electric Car Competition, where students design, engineer, and manufacture automotive products of the future. All this adds up to an educated and qualified workforce. The community that can provide a highly trained, well-educated workforce will win the jobs competition of the future. That is something very important to us because every time we talk to somebody about coming here, they ask about your workforce, your workforce development, the education level. The community that can provide a highly trained, well-educated workforce will win the jobs competition of the future. In the mix of all these targeted academic programs and training, we also want to nurture the innovators and the entrepreneurs. Somewhere out there in Huntsville right now, a programmer is sitting in a coffee shop developing the next great app. A former teacher is trying to start up her own daycare center. And a craft brewer is creating the next specialty beverage. Somewhere in Huntsville, the next best cyber encryption program is under design. And organic chefs are creating jalapeno jellies, sweet pickles, sauces, and mustards to sell. That's the kind of diversity that we find here in Huntsville. To encourage innovation and entrepreneurship, we have established an advisory team where we are listening, and we're listening and we're learning. Entrepreneurs thrive in a stimulating culture, and we want to do our part in the city. And it's fascinating to listen to young entrepreneurs like Brandon Cruz talk about a team he worked with needing $7,000 to produce a commercial program. The $7,000 was so that the team could live on ramen noodles for the next six months as long as it took to design the program. <laughs> and remember, we also have a goal to heighten visibility. Our Huntsville's initiatives with geo, cyber, energy, and the new biotech have put the global spotlight on the depths of capabilities and opportunities in our city and across the country. In the past few months alone, the initiatives have hosted conferences, summits, and tabletop exercises in Huntsville that have drew the senior most leadership in government and private enterprise. In the areas of cybersecurity, geospatial intelligence, energy, and biotech research, and not just from our country, but from Europe and Asia, you can bet that there are smart eyes looking at Huntsville. Our strategy on visibility is working. Part of making Huntsville a vibrant, globally connected community is looking at our connectivity. Gary, this one's for you. Uh, in the digital communications, it's all about big data and speed. We need a telecommunication infrastructure that is bigger, faster, and more reliable and affordable. After input from the Economic Development Advisory Council and many of those members I see out here today, we created a task force, which started us on a conversation about new lingo for me, big pipes, data portals, large data dumps. Our, our group was put together to explore our connectivity needs. This January, we will issue our first request for proposal for a vendor to start the process towards Huntsville providing fiber to the business and fiber to the home. Electricity, water, sewer, and roads, they're the infrastructure that have taken us into the 21st century. Fiber optics is the infrastructure of the future. When we connect our community to the world, we help our businesses reach new markets and we help our citizens reach a quality of life they want and expect from a tech city. You know, technology is pretty exciting. Sometimes in the mayor's office, though, we get to talk about roads. We talk about sewers, utilities, potholes. They're not as exciting as the technology, but they are the infrastructure essentials that are the determining factors in our industrial recruitment and our high standard of living. 110,000 people commute to jobs in and out of Huntsville each and every day. Our primary roadways keep us as viable as a regional employment center. So last year when state budgets were cut and our road projects were delayed, we set out on a Restore Our Roads campaign to highlight the importance of these major corridors. After months of discussion, 
we signed an unprecedented $250 million cost-sharing contract with the state of Alabama to start construction on eight of our top state road projects within five years. This includes overpasses at Maston Lake on North Parkway, in Bird Springs and Lily Flag on South Parkway, the beginning of the new, uh, new Northern Bypass with the extension of MLK and Research Park Boulevard, improvements to Highway 72 West and East at I-565, State Representative Matt McCutcheon, and I saw Mac in the crowd today, we couldn't have done it without you. You were key in the negotiations and thank you for your help. As we thank our full legislative delegation, thank y'all very much for your help. <laughs> to the Governor, Robert Bentley, and Highway Director John Cooper, we want to thank them for their commitment to Huntsville, their commitment to solving our problems. We could not have done this without their help either. In addition to the Restore Our Roads, we have 19 other primary road projects which are also underway. For a total investment of $383 million, roads that are vital to a healthy transportation network, roads that are vital to our continued success. Between road construction and all the developments breaking ground, we joke in City Hall that 2015 will be the year of the orange cone. So you may see some of your orange cones over the next year. You know, while all these developments, all this development is exciting, our administration begin, is also a strong proponent of measured growth, smart growth, planned growth. We do not want to, nor will we, outrun our infrastructure. That is so very important to a community. We cannot outstrip our infrastructure. We've got to keep putting money back in it. For the past six years, we've been deliberate in our planning with a cost-conscious eye on projects that will provide maximum return on investment for our taxpayer dollars. And that strategy won't change. But also, with one eye on the checkbook, we need to take a longer view at where we make our investments. Huntsville's evolving. We're evolving demographically, economically, and socially. And it's time to take a renewed look at our big picture. What do we want our city to look like 10, 20, 30 years from now? A big question. What do we want our city to look like 10, 20, 30 years from now? We launched the big picture, our comprehensive master planning process in May, and we're pleased that thousands of citizens have already participated. They are enthusiastically invested in this opportunity to shape Huntsville for decades to come. Whether you're an empty nester, a Gen Xer, a millennial, or just a guy with gray hair like me, this plan is about the future. Let's look at it. How many people in this room would live in a four to six hundred square foot apartment? The next piece of the puzzle is online shopping versus physical storefront, so bricks and mortar. The acquisition and demolition of what people term blighted property. That conversation is about North Huntsville, it's about South Huntsville, about East Huntsville, about West Huntsville. It's about the entire city and what we want to see happen to our city. This is our first plan in 40 years, so I'm expecting a lot to change. I'm expecting there to be a more creative, flexible um, ways of doing business. And I think that's something that everyone is looking forward to. One of the biggest things will be how we approach our growth. Um, when we talk about how our land is used, um, how we're serving the people who live here. Uh, the way the city grew up over the intervening decades was very, very heavy on one certain type of growth. Very sort of sprawl oriented, very um, low density, and we're starting to see a look for more variety and we're starting to see demand for some change. Wow. Public shopping center right in downtown. This is a great project. We're hoping that as we move forward, our new plan will showcase really the best practices from all over the country, how we can accommodate new growth while really capturing what's important. It's why the planning combined with patience ultimately delivers that payoff. Um, frequently one of the biggest hurdles in any planning exercise is just getting people to the point where they believe that what they're saying can have an impact. And we've really been pleased with not only how many folks have turned up, but how positive they've been, how optimistic they've been, how confident they feel 
that the process that we're going through right now will actually result in change and will result in growth and will result in a really bright future for the city. Parks, schools, and revitalizing neighborhoods, and we're only halfway through the big picture planning process. If you have not been to the Big Picture website, I encourage you to do so and learn more about this master planning effort. All the keynotes, and there have been some really great keynotes with the guest speakers, are featured, and you can post your ideas too. This is your plan. This is not just the city of Huntsville plan. This is everybody's plan. We anticipate coming out with a final report, which will be presented to the community next summer and the planning department will be tasked with annual updates to ac accurately represent the market's desires in our evolving city. Know that this plan will be ever-changing. It is a plan to address the needs of this city as we evolve. Now, as a mid-sized city, Huntsville is in the sweet spot where we are cultured enough to fulfill the needs and interests of citizens who, would choose to, who could choose to live anywhere, but we're small enough to be authentic with a southern sense of family and community that draws people together. People may come here for economic opportunities, but they stay here because of our high quality of life. In a city of less than 200,000 people, our professional symphony orchestra just celebrated its 60th year. Our Museum of Art is mounting a superb exhib exhibitions and offering lectures with authors, writers, and artists, and it's truly becoming a cultural center for all citizens, something remarkable for a city of less than 200,000. The Arts Council is working with the city to launch our first public art plan that will incorporate art into new developments. The Arts and Entertainment Districts, which many of you have been to, are extremely popular. And they've, this has driven an increase in special event permits this year up 28%. These are our festivals, parades, 5K runs, and food truck rallies. Who would ever thought that 10 food trucks and a guy playing a guitar would bring out 5,000 people? <laughs> Never thought it. <laughs> to Chad Emerson and the Downtown Huntsville uh, Initiative Group, Inc. Group, thank you for the job that you've done. You've done a great job with downtown. We're also committed to greater investment in our parks, greenways, and recreational opportunities. Our goal is to link play spaces to green spaces, bike trails to walking trails, and to connect greenways to public amenities. If you've been out to John Hunt Park, you'll see some of our progress. We have started removing the old fences, taxiways, and laying foundation for a new design. Trees are coming in, and we wanna thank the volunteers, especially those volunteers that came out on that cold, cold Saturday. Is that right, Joy? It was cold. But also, to volunteers like Toyota, Thank you for coming out uh, and bringing out a large contingent from Toyota, Huntsville Track Club and Lowe South Parkway. They helped us extend trails, install fences and plant trees and even gave a check. This is what we call a true public-private partnership. We have committed funds in the capital plan for the next 10 years and we'll be looking for more public-private partnership opportunities in the future. You know, one of the biggest things that we have to do is work on education. And when it comes to public education in Huntsville, our city schools is a system that is recognized as one of the premier programs in the state. Through the leadership of our superintendent and school board, and I see many of the school board here today, thank you for your service. We are receiving national recognition for our innovation and sweeping reforms that are transforming our schools. In the past three years, enrollment has continued to climb and scholarships are, are at an all-time high, awarding the class of 2014 $41 million to attend the nation's top colleges and university. Early childhood learning opportunities include 37 new pre-K programs serving more than 660 students. These are formative years and they're critical to a child's education. If a child enters kindergarten unprepared to learn to read and write, it's an uphill battle from there forward. Not only will our children be prepared, they're ready for the future. Two weeks ago, we were at Montesano Elementary and I watched first graders write their name in binary code. Fourth and fifth graders are using code to write programs. Technology is changing the way our students learn and think. 
from building green power cars to reading Shakespeare on an iPad to working math problems in a lab that resembles a video arcade. Our schools are collaborating also with higher education and local industry. For the first time, advanced manufacturing students will design and fabricate flight hardware for the space station using a Fortis 3D printer. They will also design parts for the deep space habitat suit for NASA. To me, that's pretty cool stuff. All of our high schools and our two middle schools now have cybersecurity programs. Three weeks ago, in round one of this year's Cyber Patriot competition, the students captured 15 of the top 22 spots in Alabama. Incidentally, two of the teams, and should not surprise you, are all girls. And, and we, we even look forward to better things. If you remember, Grissom placed second in the national competition last year. The school board is spending millions to construct new schools, invest in curriculum, and recruit committed teachers so every child can experience a high quality of education. From government to business community and our residents, this city is fully committed to providing the best education for all of our students. This city is fully committed to providing the best education for all of our students. Something very, very important. The state of this city, your city, is better than good, it's great. Our budget is lean and balanced. We earned a AAA credit rating for the sixth straight year. And if you have one takeaway from this, and if you do have a takeaway from this today, I hope that you take away that there is a plan, there is a strategy, that we're moving together with that. You know, and that plan and strategy is, was started on a course that we embarked on six years ago. It's brought us here today. And we need to keep doing what we're doing. The plan is working. The strategy is sound. And the strategy is sound. The plan's working because of teamwork. Because of the Huntsville-Madison County Chamber of Commerce and all of you who are part of it. Because of the four-year colleges and the two-year colleges and Helen McAlpine at Drake and Ms. Be Dr. Beck at Calhoun. We can provide a workforce and a workforce that is an educated workforce that can move us forward because of what the school board's doing and the superintendent's doing, but because of what the, the general population's doing with a meeting last Saturday up at First Missionary Baptist Church talking about how we can be better partners in making the schools a better place. Because of our community partners sitting here, because of Team Redstone, who is part of this, because of Team NASA, who is part of this, because of all the volunteers and the people who give back to this community. Our strategy is sound and our plan is working. Our goal is to continue to attract the best and the brightest, for Huntsville to be the city for young talent and seasoned professionals, to draw the world's most innovative companies. It takes high quality education, a robust infrastructure, and an enviable quality of life, and all that makes us very competitive. And we don't have to be competitive on the Alabama stage. We have to be competitive on the world stage. Not the Alabama stage, not the US stage. We have to be competitive on the world stage because that's where we will compete in the future. We are a city of doers and thinkers. We're a city of creators. And together, we are Huntsville. I want to thank you for being here today. Thank you for being part of the plan and the strategy that has taken Huntsville forward. God bless you, and God bless the city of Huntsville. Thank you. Mayor, it's amazing what's been accomplished in the past year. It's equally amazing what we're going to anticipate going forward. Thank you for that presentation, but mostly thank you for your leadership. With that, we thank everyone here for uh, being here for today's uh, State of the City Address, and we're now adjourned.